ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerdlings of all ages, welcome to this week's Lobby Blue. We have uh, four games for you this evening. Let's go ahead and move that on through. There we go. And uh, 16 teams battling it out, presumably, for a slot in Lobby 1 in the near future. I'm joined, of course, by Tala. How's it going, man? Everything's been pretty good. We're hopping into the play now. Things very, very exciting indeed. And uh, we, I'm, I'm very excited. This is the first time we're doing uh, Auzon. The blue lobby is incredible. We have uh, lots of top teams in here. Digital Chaos, Team Kinguin, Crimson Esports, No Loot Gaming, TBD, Royal Banditos, Avangard, Gamers Origin, Ronin, House of Nobles, Finstack, Team Red Zone, MyTech, Team Random, Blank, and Alternate Attacks are going to be competing for a win in game number one. We can already see now a one o'clock to seven o'clock plane coming up on Irangle. What's going on here? Yeah, well, the interesting thing to point out is that some of the teams that are top in our lobby, uh, like Kinguin and Digital Chaos, they in fact have the chance this week to push themselves up into lobby one. Their points are really close to some of the bottom teams in lobby one. So if they consistently play better than those teams, then they could be looking at our promotion. But right now That's what we massive. can see Sorry? That's absolutely massive. Oh, no, it is. And um, looking at their performance, they've only been going higher, uh, you know, slowly improving their placements, and their global points have been going up slowly. slowly. So these are our top contenders. And coming off a massive win last night uh, from uh, in Global Loot League, Kinguin, uh, they completely beat every single person that's in this lobby and lobby one last night. So coming into this game, coming into these matches, they are the, the favorites for myself uh, to win and uh, progress a bit forward. But um, looking in now into the into the game, opening up the map, we just see the teams pretty much flying out and getting some vehicles and going off to their own respective places away from each other because no one likes those early team fights. They just want to loot up, get the gear, and have an equal chance. As you can see, Crimson uh, have decided to split up in the top right of the map, going to uh, Stalba and Kameshki. They're going to be reasonably isolated there, which is excellent for them. They're going to be able to loot up nice and chill. We can see there are several teams uh, calling Yasnaya their home to start off with. Unconspicuous at the moment, having a look around, but uh, no teams actually engaging there just yet. Dan Bear has found a buggy, and he's going to be moving across the middle of the map. We can see the zone centered in the on the Kofka. Extremely, extremely east here. So a lot of players, especially the ones that dropped near and around Georgia Pole, are going to have to make a very, very long way round. Well, as we know, it's Crimson dropped in Stalva and Kameshki. I was going to say that they probably will just look for some vehicles, loot up nicely, and quickly, swiftly make their way out of there. But now that the zone's landed on top of them, they can take all the time that they want to loot up, knowing that no one's going to contest anytime soon. But some early shots coming out in North Georgia Pole. Yep, that's right. And that would be Avangar uh, taking a couple of shots at blank, I believe. So uh, a T-Dove uh, there from Avangar looking for potential shots no one actually going down just yet there's 61 still alive so uh, someone has gone down in the meantime as people start looking for vehicles north george of course particularly sparse when it comes to vehicles so uh, it can be a little bit tricky and there are several teams competing for them now as well if you can manage to headshot someone who's in a uaz and steal the car that is a <laughs> major major win Indeed, especially with this circle being so far away from North Georgia Pole, it's uh, it's ideal to try and get as many of those vehicles as possible. And it actually was T-Dov that we saw. He actually has a kill confirmed. And in the top right, we see Stuff getting a kill on uh, Maidai as well. So a few early frags, a few early players falling. Not so great for those teams, uh, putting them at a disadvantage as well. Maidai really unfortunate there. Gaming's Origin going to be going one man short to start things off, but uh, they're going to have to make do. Don't forget, their place isn't entirely confirmed until everyone from the team dies. So, yes, that's slightly unfortunate, but they will just have to make do with what they've got. No aggressive moves coming out from them. It's going to be Survival, which is the name of the game here, and uh, we will see how far they manage to get. The Georgia Pult teams still not all in vehicles. Uh, we have had one person killed uh, basically crossing the bridge. Looks like in the middle of the river there, but it is on the bridge. And uh, Onoctive is going to grab that and head back where he has actually got a bike in North George. So uh, that'll be accompanying him and his DP28 over to the other side of the map. Uh, I think Onoctive uh, actually just got a kill on someone on that bike and uh, they ran himself over. So that's, a, that, that's just another easy quick kill right at the start of the game. And it just gives uh, this team even more dominance in North George. Well, look at that. There's only two players left on Team 17 there. That is uh, Team Blanku that is actually left 
uh, to fight against. Oh no, and that yeah, they were that you're absolutely right there, Tala. They were the two players that were south. Uh, of George. One of them has died on the bridge. The other one is swimming across right now. Uh, Rick is not going to be of major help uh, to his team for quite a while. And in the meantime, uh, we have these guys, Team 9, pushing in. So it looks like uh, Blank are just going to have to move further and further west into Georgia Pole to avoid being outnumbered in a team fight. It looks like everyone's back to looting for now. They know they have those vehicles available, but uh, they're going to have to work out transport pretty quick when the circle starts coming in. Oh. It is harder to wrangle. It is quite hard figuring out where the vehicles. I usually get this a lot that vehicles don't spawn in like all around the map, but on one road you'll have about ten vehicles. Just that one road, ten vehicles. So it's quite annoying. But let's see if these teams can actually find the vehicles and make it's the, the good way. Good old, the good old mill to car park. I remember those days. Oh. <laughs> That's why I stopped dropping North George, man. I can't deal with these circles anymore. It's too much stress. Oh. Well, also the other the other interesting thing is that we have to talk about the circles. Uh, we have a different circle uh, set up for competitive for Alzheim, Sure. Uh, which just means that later on down into the game, towards mid to late game, the circle speed is a lot slower, so you don't really need those vehicles towards the end. But it tries to favor you to fight a team instead of trying to outrun the circle. Um, but to make it fair, to make the circle still a threat, the damage of the circle has been increased later on. Sure, so which makes sense. It, yeah, so you don't have to think about the circle as much. You don't have to think about the circle over fighting someone, but you still have to have it in the back of your mind. Absolutely. Rick's now slowly rejoining his team in North George. By the way, there are several teams driving and getting towards the circle now. Uh, the circle, of course, centering approximately on the Pofka, on the east side of the map. 59 people alive, still all 16 teams left in this game. And, uh, ooh... Well, uh -oh. interestingly, a couple of people from Digital Chaos actually moving west, so it looks like they might be looking to get a piece of the action as well, see if they can sneak an extra little bit of loot in. We'll find out if that ends up paying off a lot. Ooh, and that's a crate. That is the first crate of the game, to my knowledge. Cloudtail is going to be circling around and seeing if he can do a sneaky pickup on whatever is inside. He's MK getting shot at a little bit, and that is going to be very tasty and likely to be complementing his M4. Indeed. So roll bad details, just get themselves an MK14. Uh, quite an interesting, quite a fun gun to actually have. Um, uh, apologies, we do have the water sound bug right now. That should go away in due course. Um, it's a it's a known bug. Uh, just don't spectate anyone that's under the water, but it's all okay. Um, uh, moving in, Kingwin are just driving straight fast into Pachinki as well. Will Faster, Faster actually notice them and I take shots. He's the only yeah, one. He, he's on his own at the moment, though. He's on his own. Um, yeah, yeah. He, he is unlikely to want to have to deal with that right now. Uh, he's the only member from Digital Chaos that are there. Uh, looks like everyone else is up north. Uh, Ewen and Ewan just kind of chilling out. I thought they were going to go towards Georgia Pole for a second, but they went about as far as halfway to shooting range, and now they are heading back. Everyone just driving around and trying to find their kind of base to make in this circle. Uh, if I'm right, I think at least. 30, 40% of the circle's water. It's it on. will be to start off with, but yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily think using the water at this early stage of the game is going to benefit anyone at all. Awian actually going down. We have some action uh, near Yasnaya right now, and it looks like he's going to get taken out very, very quickly indeed. Botsman with the kill there. So uh, House of Nobles able to pick up that kill. Where is his teammate? Ewan is nearby, still in a UAZ. His teammate has probably told him, don't even bother, go where I did. That is a problematic uh, situation you would find yourself in. It is 2v1. Engaging people one at a time is definitely not the done thing here. So uh, Ewan will have to play a little bit of survival. He needs to get um, Fausto back with him, to be honest. Other ones, they've split up way too much. They have, they have. They, uh, but it's the risk that you're... That you'll have to be willing to take but it, it, like this early game skirmishes teams generally trying to stay away from it but because they split up losing that one person is better than losing two people in that same car but nonetheless they're going to be going into the mid to late game uh, at a massive disadvantage compared to the other teams by only having three players left as well uh crimson as well still quite split up uh, after landing stalber and kameshki uh they're sort of in that quadrant of the map still but they're not exactly uh teamed up moving around from house to house just yet still 58 alive as people jostle for position inside the circle though it's not ex uh, not necessarily that urgent just yet Thang in the meantime spotting a couple of uh Kinguin players nearby oh, they have to be very careful indeed and Fingwin coming in with a few shots as well he has actually tagged him up quite a bit and now they're just going to make a fortress of those uazs and that one darcy and just hide behind it so they can return shots the interesting thing is that they're really far away they are killing them up a tiny bit 
but I don't think that they will be looking to secure any kills. And King Gunnar are saying that it's a lost cause. Let's find this dip, and they might find fight back. In fact, but I was going to point out that you know just taking those easy pop shots against uh, a team that is driving past or whatever, you have the chance of getting that one kill. But most importantly, you do damage to their armor. You make them use their meds. You make them use their uh, boosters. Yep. And effectively, in, th in this game, your armor and meds are an economy. Because once you have them, you're not really going to be looking for any more. You're not going to be looting up later. And meanwhile, Larson picks up T-Dove. He does indeed, and uh, he finishes off that kill as well. So, uh, Kingwin out in the open a little bit, but with plenty of vehicles to shield themselves. You can see here, uh, the Orangle car park is alive and well. <laughs> and they've managed to take the lobby down to 57 people now as T-Dove goes down. We were watching T-Dove a little bit earlier. He is part of Team TBD, T-Bone TV, Froz, and Balok, somewhere else on the map, presumably. Uh, but uh, unfortunately for them, T-Dove will not be joining them in the next circle. We're finally getting people in now. And still, by the way, uh, outside of the action, as alternate attacks goes one man down, we still have a team in North George. Uh, classic TSM strat coming out there. <laughs> classic, classic TSM strat. Uh, I'm a fan, I must say, of this strat. But meanwhile, attacks, uh, they're trying to stop anyone getting into the circle. Jerpsy, in fact, took down one of their teammates, and he's super low, and he's still in the blue. Can he actually get taken down? He cannot. He's going to get away just to skim of his health, and Lurkson is going to be uh, res back up while all these vehicles just make their way. That's Team 13. Uh, Finstack making their way straight past the attacks. Massive convoy of vehicles coming into the circle now as oh, uh, we oh get yeah. to the business end of things. Oh, and Jerpsy does actually go down, but uh, the play zone will be the person who gets the credit for that. It looks like a teammate will be able to help him up. But uh, that's what happens when you're extremely low. And don't forget, of course, the damage from the circle isn't negligible. You can't ignore it forever. Take a couple of bullets and you are liable to something like this happening. So that's going to deplete their med stock, of course. You'll have to use some of those boosties coming into the circle. And it's a very much a finite supply. Most of the compounds you might find yourself in, well, guess what? They'll be taken by someone and looting is extremely dangerous at this point in the game. You know, I absolutely love this, that what Kingo is doing. They've just found a dip in the road and they're like, you know what? We don't want the compounds. Home now. We don't want, we don't want compounds. Like, we'll just defend here with our cars in this dip. And it's working. It's working for them. Because they're right next to a road where vehicles are most likely going to go past and they will light them up. And if they don't finish those vehicles, you have the people in the compounds just uh, east of, yeah, east, east of prison. That will continue lighting them, as you can see, Vasku and people who are fighting them at the moment, trying to take back shots. Well, who, who needs a compound when you can make your own, right? I mean, completely and utterly viable there. And uh, <laughs> they're doing a fantastic job of defending Vasku, taking a couple of pot shots over. What? Oh my god, that, uh, that dip in the hill is a very, very long way away. Trying to land those shots with the SKS, not really getting purchased on them just yet. Uh, I think he managed to get a tag off, but that is about it. So uh, every bandage counts, I do suppose. And a lot of action going on in the west side of Lopovka. Team 14 and 7 both in action here. And then from Team Red, so Gavan is going to be inside a hut seeking shelter temporarily. I'm trying to work out who they're shooting at right now. Is it Clouter? It could actually be. No, they're surrounded at the moment by Team 16. So that's Team Random and uh, Royal Banditos going at it basically in the open here. It is. Cloudtail is actually even the scoreboard here by taking down one person. But Stoff comes around the corner and takes down two. And the third, he's just got a massive flank on. Oh dear, that is disgusting. The last person. That's Opji, right? Yeah, that's Opji. He's to his left. But that's three people he's taken down by himself. So he's just saved his team from complete elimination. And this could be the first team to go down, Jorosa. Not a single team has been wiped out yet. Oh, it could indeed. Cloudtail gets taken down by Mole Manners now. And it looks like they're going to be rushing through trying to look for that final kill. Pride going down elsewhere too, and there we go. 16 teams, 54 alive, still somebody there, holding on by the skin of their teeth. Raffi looking lonely across that hill there, but uh, I think uh, that no, the rate at which people... Oh no, pardon me, yeah, OP, he managed to get away in the dasher. He just, so he is he the only car, person alive now? Yeah, he is the only he person alive, yeah. <laughs> he just got out of there. He was just like, no, not at all. But meanwhile, uh, people going straight past the Asanaya. Keen does get taken down. Bowser and you. Oh no, and that's uh, absolutely disastrous for Digital Chaos, of course. Uh, one of the top teams in this lobby here. Beautiful uh, uh, 720, make that. Yeah, 720. You as followed by Vehicle Explosion, and Mumino is going down. 
Crimson will be able to get the credit for that. Fausto, though, delivering an awful lot of bullets the way of House of Nobles right now. That was cheeky. I just I just realized what happened on the scoreboard there. Digital Chaos were actually shooting at those vehicles going past, they and Crimson just last shot that vehicle and got the explosion and took exactly that kill. Right. So they just got seven points for free. Completely. I mean, it's a great way to get seven points. Right. If I, right. I'll tell you what, if I got seven points every time I hit something as large a hitbox as a vehicle, I'd be pro at this game. Yeah, but you, but you didn't do all the work to get it down to one hit. No, that would be the bit of how the game would, I can't do very well. <laughs> So I guess here's the question. Uh, is his team going to be thanking OPJ later on? Is it the most team player move to run away and survive until the next circle? Or is it the most anti-team player move? Hey, it's, Opinion uh, it's divided. a survival game. It's <laughs> no, survival. that's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you do Tal, when we're in a pub game and you fly halfway across the map and you can't res me, I, I, I don't see it as a survival game for you. <laughs> Just saying. Look, I try. I'm the, I'm the support in our game. Right? I'm the one giving the meds. I'm the one that's instantly resing people because I can't aim. Yeah, and you right? can't do that from halfway across the map, can you? Look at this. Like, halfway <laughs> across the map, you have visual chaos shooting at uh, Rick's, Rick's mask as he runs into a yellow building for cover. But Team 17, absolutely surrounded by so many people being they shot are. at, their vehicles are completely gone. That, that is a massive problem for them right now. They've managed to get a couple of those uh, yellow houses, but an awful lot of windows. There are plenty of angles you can shoot someone inside from. They are, at the end of the day, it is shelter, it's useful, but there are plenty of buildings that uh, offer maybe a little bit more cover than they would, and they're in the middle of three other squads right now. So what remains of blank uh, are surrounded by all sides, and they're looking, <laughs> I mean, Digital Chaos are looking down the barrels at them, so not an ideal place to be. We'll see where the next circle comes out, though, because that will determine who needs to move and who does not. And the answer seems to be all of them. Kingwin, however, they, they've got center circle there with a uh, fortress of vehicles. And you've got Team 13. Uh, what's the name? Finstack. That's it. That's the name. Finstack. They've got themselves the warehouse. Absolutely just chilling, waiting for anyone to come out. They, I think they do know that attacks are quite close. They're in the compound just uh, south of them. But right now, a little assault happening on Mansion, which should be interesting to watch. Conspicu unconspicuous. Exactly. Gamers Origin and Ronan both deciding they want a piece of Mansion at the moment. No one's actually inside. They're skirting around the edges, looking for people. Uh, unconspicuous and co. Gamers Origin just kind of chilling out in an individual house on the outskirts of those gates. And meanwhile, we have Ronan just looking in from the outside on another corner, but it doesn't look like they have any intention on moving so far. So a little bit of a stalemate here as things currently stand. I suspect it will take the circle to force the issue here. And Fausto finally getting picked off, and that was within a vehicle as well as so a digital chaos in more and more trouble. They were pinning down blank the last time we saw them, but at the moment, they are looking in a little bit dicey situation. Yeah, they just got into their vehicles and uh, drove straight past uh, Team Random, and they were just ripe for picking, but... Um... Just looking at the map, oh, well, uh, Digital Chaos have only Ewan and Jokers left alive, and they're just going to be going straight into Team 14, and oh, no. down goes Ewan as well. Exactly the same thing. Team Red Zone uh, finding those kills, and Digital Chaos out of the game. The first team to fall, bottom of the first game. My goodness, this is absolutely not what we would have predicted uh, in game number one, Tala. Not at all. Digital Chaos being the first team to achieve, uh, or rather be, full white. Not the situation they wanted to find themselves in. We now have alternate attacks back in the action, though. Not much time for rest over here. They're taking a couple of pot shots, but aren't able to get any additional kills. 15 teams left in the game. Digital Chaos, ladies and gentlemen, are first team casualties of the game. Uh, that's quite unfortunate for them because in this lobby, in Lobby Blue, they are the team that has the most global points. So if they can just kind of play a lot more consistently in the next coming game, they still have that chance to get into Lobby 1. If that is Lumber Mill, Alliance, Noxious, and Purge in Lobby 1, do not perform because the global points difference between that, those teams are just one or two or three. So they still have that chance, but this loss, this coming last, will not help them so much. But meanwhile, Crimson finds himself into a little forest fight. Rafi, uh, unfortunately, being the victim right there. And uh, that's two more explosions. Is that, oh, beautiful stuff. And uh, Rick, as well as Cudtastic going down there. Crimson, NB, just constantly chucking the frags over, looking for those additional kills. A couple more explosions coming their way. Rafi, extremely low. And Moleman across the ridge as well. Is he going to be able to come up and maybe go for a bit of a flank? Crimson all over these guys right now. 
MBS trying to find stuff. They are just going to be pushing. They know they've got the dominance. The Mole Man is running out of there, but do they know that they're going to be running into Ronin uh, as they come out? They need to find cover, but the forest is probably the best cover that they had. They should have just stayed and fight. Team Random. Uh, uh, th there's a very real chance right now that Team Random are the next team out of this game. Uh, Mole Man and Co. Extremely dicey situation that they just about managed to dodge Crimson Esports. But what are they going to do from this point onwards? Uh, Blank as well. A little bit of an endangered species at the moment. And Kinguin, I up another crate. Are you serious? They haven't moved and they get given a crate. <laughs> but anyways, OPG is still alive. He's holding strong. He is actually following the action very slowly from behind. He's made his way into Mansion, the last player alive on Royal Banditos. He saw the rest of his team get wiped out, but he's in the middle of all of these other teams. And Kingwin, on the other hand, they find attacks. Drubsy gets taken down, and he's going to be wiped out of the game. You should know better than to drive past Kingwin at that close range. Alternate attacks going to lose a member right there. And uh, Kingwin continuing to build on the car park fortress. People are potentially looking at the crate, but they certainly won't be when they see these guys here. The rest of alternate attacks having to take a different route. Uh, into some safe area of the circle. So, oh, heading over into top right, though, could be a problem because they're going to run into Crimson as well. This top right quadrant of the circle is going to become a hotbed in a couple of seconds. Meanwhile, Timmy's is trying to find his fight here on this little quad compound on the outside, and so is Slishy. But you've got Butts just remaining in the little hut, playing it playing it slow while g Thang has a bigger building. Exactly right. So Tim, Timmy and Sid can't uh, can't really come around the side of that in case G Fang manages to get an excellent angle from them uh, within the house. That's going to be a little bit of a problem. Timmy also doesn't have a helmet on him anymore, so uh, a... tricky situation. Oh, that's good, dear. Oh, dear. that's good. They just got a nade onto uh, Butts, and now G Fang is the last one here. So it's basically a one v two, but he needs to kind of outmaneuver them at this point. But the nades, they're pretty the nades sick, are quite man. strong. Exactly. Uh, but obviously stood no chance against that really excellent timing with that throw. And a great way to break the stalemate here. The rest of the nades don't appear to be getting him. Ji Thang out the left side of the house now, or backwards as far as Timmy's is concerned. A little bit of a peek. Not quite able to find it. He rushes out, but he gets eliminated. And as a result, we have another team eliminated from the contest. 14 teams remaining here in game number one. Indeed, and during that... You have attacks. They've just got themselves a little corner. They've got themselves a house right next to Mansion, so they've got them all completely sorted. But meanwhile, I think we just lost another team. Oh dear, was we that, did was indeed. Was that Origins? I think we just lost Game of Origins. Yeah, so Red that... Zone. Team Red Zone just uh, completely assaulted that uh, the house on the bottom left of Mansion and got rid of Origins completely. Insane. Push. No loot gaming are gone now as well. So a, a lot of the teams that uh, have quite a following and are doing uh, reasonably well, to be honest, are going out quite early on in this game. Uh, not really sure if that's necessarily expected here. Digital Chaos certainly didn't expect it. But uh, this is really proving to be quite a dynamic game and sets up actually games two through four rather nicely from a leaderboard perspective. Great shot, by the way, from Gaxi there. They have just literally sat in this one spot for the whole game and let people drive by and those people have let them kill them. They haven't been contested. It's a good strategy. Once. It's a great strategy. They, essentially, they're sitting in an open field. Like, now I don't even know where their vehicles are, so they are sitting in an open field, but they are uncontested. They are completely dominating this field by themselves. But little do they know that every single team, well, quite a lot of people, are just bunched around Mansion. And now, now that they need to run towards Mansion, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're running towards Mansion and Dizzy is trying to take them out, but he gets taken down by Red Zone. So you just have crossfire upon crossfire. So this might be their chance for Kingwin to run across his open field, but never mind. They get the circle. So all those teams that are in Mansion that are further back from Mansion, Crimson attacks, Ronin, they will all need to push out very soon and have a but fight. Love Fantastic to headshot by Big T, by the way, over there on Ronan. That was really excellently done. Kingwin still continuing to rack up the kills. God knows how many um, how many plus sevens are going to be next to their team for the rest uh, of this game. We have one person down at the moment, but it looks like he's surrounded by his teammates and things are looking relatively oh, no, what's, okay. What's MBS doing? Oh, dear. Cast a curse much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was almost perfect timing. Uh, so, uh, NBS is going down there. Kingwin continue to survive as long as Larson gets revived now, which we do believe he will. 
Uh, there is no reason to expect them not to come out of this as a team of four. Stoff getting extremely close to the rest of Crimson in the meantime, and he gets absolutely roasted, and that's Mole Man down as well. So, uh, is that the rest of the team? No, pardon me, he's not down, but he is the last person alive, and he is all over Crimson right now. So, Frost is still a kill that was taken, over. he is, yeah. Quite a lot is happening in this small area. Um, so Crimson are completely gone. They've got two people, they've got one person left standing up, and he, okay, so they're gonna get the resident off, so they're gonna be completely alive. But while they do that, they're gonna be shot up by the people in Mansion. Now, the problem is, is now that the circle, this, this is where the circle blue, the blue circle is actually slower at moving in. You can spend your time, you can take your time fighting, like I was saying earlier. But if you leave it till the last minute, you're still gonna be running away from the circle, and that circle does chunk really badly, and it will kill you. So now that everyone's pushing up, we've got Froz and Tebow just making their way out of... Uh, I call that Reddit Hill compound because everyone likes to drive up there. There goes Crimson. So we're down to 12 teams now. Crimson bowing out at that point and Froz actually getting taken down himself after landing a couple of really nice shots. That's part of Team TBD, by the way. Uh, T-Bone gets taken down as well. So TBD at the moment not looking in the most healthy situation. And uh, a little be bit TBD of out now. Oh, are they completely out now? Was T-Bone TV the last guy? Yeah, no. Uh, oh, yes, 11 teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. He was the last guy. So they've gone. Kingwin making their way in, but they've got Ronin on their tail. Really hot on their tail, but it doesn't matter because Kingwin will not stop at anything. You push them, you try and fight them, they will take you on and they will win. However, Gaxi is quite far behind, lagging behind. He is down. Very hard for them to actually pick him back up. A little bit split up at the moment. Yeah, this uh, very, very open, unfortunately. Uh, this situation they find themselves in. Chucking a lot of smokes in an attempt to see if someone can head on over there. Miracu giving it a go. Uh, trying to claim a little bit of space so that there's enough room for them to pick up Gaxi. So they're zoning out Ronin right now. Let's see if they end up pushing. Oh That's my it. god. Well, Ronin they gone. did end up pushing and they ended up dying. So that'll be that. An excellent frag grenade coming from Miracu there. And that finishes off Ronin. We're now all the way down to eight teams. This is heating up really quick. Indeed, and 16 alive. You also have Frost from attacks being taken out by um, Vernetti. Sorry, That's Vernetti. it, they're gone too. All of a sudden? That's it. That was, that was very close. So another team getting taken down and Kai God has sat here going, hang on a second, what just happened there? Down to two here. Zone moving in in 45 seconds. And that, I mean, that white circle, it's extremely open. A lot of smoke's being used. If we use all of this as cover now, well, I guess the teams kind of have to. Who is going to be the first to blink and run effectively across open ground into the next circle? As we know from watching people walk past Kinguin, that's a little bit uh, asking for it, if you will. So we're going to have to get a situation where someone's going to blink first. And there we go. Kai God is the last person alive from uh, attacks. Lyrikson was trying to help him, trying to take out people uh, just in front of Kai God that he is looking at because he knows that they have to push through him, but he gets refragged and taken out as a result. Now throw some nades. If Kai God is, he shouldn't be the first one to move because he has he's further away from the blue, but it, he needs to make it into the circle as safely as possible. There are two people from House of Nobles behind Kai God. They're going to have to move first, but uh, Kai God is still playing 1v2 when it comes to that sort of situation. So, a little bit of a tricky one there. Got compound in the meantime. She's seeing a little bit of action. An excellent frag grenade from Red Zone actually takes out Gaxi. And uh, he's only recently, of course, been coming back up. Larson is going to go down as well. So, Kingwin under heavy fire. And oh dear. That is Red Zone wiping out Kingwin. But I must say, Kinguin had a very good game. They fought really well, and they've got the most kills in this game by far, from my opinion. Uh, that will be fact at the end of the game. But here we go. The person to blink first is Bossman, and he gets taken down as a result. Always a... <laughs> it's never fun knowing that you're in the open and someone is going to have to move first. And uh, that's part of why, of course, the slower moving circle ends up being advantageous to us seeing the action. It's not just an absolute massive melee. Kai God going momentarily into the blue there to see if he can grab a couple of meds uh, from his teammate. And armor actually wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be bad in that sort of situation. He <laughs> is seriously risking death here. Oh well, didn't have to have the blues and do it for him. Yeah, well, it was interesting, very, very, very interesting uh, train of thought there, but uh, it didn't work, unfortunately. And now what we have is we have Team Red Zone coming in from one end of the circle. Is that Finstack as well? Just it is Finstack, yes. 
Um, hogging around the crate. So they're trying to get as much dominance in the circle as possible. They have three people alive, while Red Zone have only two. And then you've got Blank Q, the last person alive. Oh, it's a Blank, Unbelievable. sorry. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Sorry, okay. After so, so long. No, I can't no, believe no, no, no. that, like, at the no, start no, of no, the no, game, no. we were thinking, hang on <laughs> a second, these guys are going to get annihilated early on. They really have pulled it off. This survival game, like you said earlier, Tala, it seems to be working very well. And Chris here, They've while all point. of the action was going down, just stayed out of trouble. And here they are in the final three. Is he going to get spotted? He is going to get spotted, but he doesn't. Oh, Timmy. He missed that shot and he takes Timmy down as a result. But it doesn't seem like Chris will be surviving any longer. He does switch up his position now. Seeker still firing shots north. And uh, in the meantime, Team Red Zone just kind of chilling out on the uh, southeast edge of the circle. They're not that far away, to be perfectly honest. But they're also not actively looking and trying to take shots. They're just focused... Uh, ideally on letting the other team sort of take each other out and they want to be the ones to fight the victor. You can tell from the way they're moving. They're observing, but they're not aggressively moving into any of these situations. Chris, keeping an eye out, but we have got that res coming off behind the tree. Indeed. So even though um, it, there are some silences being used in the circle, you are in the range where you can hear them. So all Red Zone are doing is they're just trying to pinpoint from the sound where the enemies are and they are looking in the right direction you've got one member looking towards chris and the others are looking towards uh finstack but here we go you've got a little push coming out from finstack gonna run straight into the crosshairs of big t he's got a rocket cover finstack and red zone looking to go head to head now Blank continuing to try and stay out of it. And these squads are getting extremely close to each other. It's a 3v2v1. Three teams left, six alive. And here we go. Big T getting taken out behind the rock. And uh, Timmy is going to all but finish him off as well. There's no way teammates else will be able to make it there in time. There goes Big T. Frag coming out though. And that's an excellent one. Timmy going down to about one HP, but not able to count himself out just yet. Instant med kit coming in. And uh, that should help him a fair bit. Team Red Zone now getting taken out. 3v1 situation into another 3v1. And Chris is the last person alive representing blank. Uh, Chris needs to stand up and take advantage of this tree because there's this only bit of cover in this circle from what I could see. If he can do this, he can, he can efficiently 1v3 right here. And he's about I mean, to can you ever efficiently 1v3? I suppose. Uh, I don't fancy my chances either way. They have been spotted, and wow, a couple of headshots will see to it that he goes down pretty quickly indeed. So congratulations. Absolutely fantastic stuff coming out of there from Team Finstack. And I have to say, in a lobby where a lot of the big teams are expecting to get big scalps and big points tonight, these guys came up good. And they've got nine kills between them as well, Tala. That is, that is really good from this team as well. You know, Kingwin... They're sixth. They're going to get some points. They have a couple of kill, a uh, couple of kills between uh, spread out between everyone there. But interestingly, Chris with three kills only, but he carried the rest of his team to rank number two, and that is quite a lot of points for them to go forward from this. So really excellent game coming out from there. Uh, th this is what I like about PUBG. It's PUBG, right? We know that Kingwin is a good team. They've just come off from a really big win last night, but. Because it's so different every single game, you can't predict what happens. And that's what makes every single game its own individual story really interesting. Consistency is important. Digital Chaos with a first team out. Kingwin still managing to finish six. What's going to happen in round number two? Ladies and gents, we'll be heading to a brief break. And when we come back, round two of four. So we will see you after this.